Hello, Chloe here from the Royal Army's Education Team bringing you another edition to Home Learning Hub. Now today we're going to be talking about the weapons and armour of the year 1066 and to do that we're going to look at the Battle of Hastings, probably one of the most famous battles in English history. Now, the Battle of Hastings was fought between Harold Godwinson and his Saxon English army and William Duke of Normandy and his Norman army and also some of his friends as well that come on for the ride. Now, the reason these two people were fighting is because Harold Godwinson had been crowned King of England after the death of the old King Edward the Confessor. However, William Duke of Normandy felt like he had the right to the throne because he was promised it a few years earlier. Now there was another contender, Harold Hardrada, however, Harold Godwinson has already managed to fend him off. Now the weapons and armour that would have been found on the Battle of Hastings are actually pretty clear to us because of this. This is the Bayeux Tapestry and it's an embroidery that depicts the Norman conquest of England, including that famous battle. Now let's have a look at the different sides and let's start with the Saxons with Harold Godwinson. Now the Saxon army would have had different types of soldiers in there, but let's start at the very, very top. This guy over here is a house carl. They're the professional soldiers of the time and therefore the best trained and most well equipped. Now you can see here, weapon wise, he's got the big battle axe that's got two hands on it. Now the axe head is huge, it's about 30 centimetres tall. We know that because of this. This is an axe head from the Royal Armouries collection and is from around the same time as the Battle of Hastings. Now also the Saxon house cowboy probably had a sword, very similar to this one, again from around the similar time, and also probably would have had spears too. Again, this is a spearhead from the Royal Armouries collection from around the similar time too. Now, all of these weapons would have caused a lot of damage, but what about the protection? Well, going back to the image of the house car from the Bayeux Tapestry, you can see that he has mail. Now, this is thousands and thousands of tiny metal rings that have all been interlocked with each other in order to make a garment that will go over the body and protect it. It's brilliant against slashing movements because those rings stop a blade from going towards the body. However, anything like an arrow or a javelin or a spear, something that is quite sharp and would fly through the air, would probably manage to find one of the tiny holes that's inside those tiny metal rings. But that doesn't mean that the mail is completely and utterly redundant. It is still really good protection. Also, it's very movable and considering it's made from metal, it's still relatively light. It's about two stone in weight, but that still would have dragged you down after a few hours of battle. Now, we've also got to protect the house car's head, so he's got a helmet with a nasal guard protecting his nose, and also he has a shield. Now, it's on his back at the moment because he needs his two hands to wield his axe, but that shield is still fantastic protection. It's round, made from wood and leather, and has a metal boss in the middle. Now, that metal boss not only protects the carrier's hands, but can also be used as a weapon. And I'm going to let you think about that and let your mind go away with how gory you can get with using that metal boss as a weapon. Now, that's the top ranks, but what about the lower ranks? Well, they would just get what they could afford. There is no easy way to say that you will go walk into battle with whatever you could get your hands on and sometimes that might not be a lot. It could have been a padded jacket for protection or maybe even something made from leather. It could have been a smaller shield or even just a plain wood shield if you could get a hold of one. But your weapon was probably more than likely a spear because they're very cheap to make, easy to wield and quite light. Now the Saxons would have had archers as well. You can see a lonely little archer just here in between the Saxon shield wall. Now they don't tend to have much armour and protection because they do need to be light and be able to manoeuvre around the battlefield. You don't want to be drawing back a bow with a lot of armour on you because it's not going to work very well. But that's the Saxons. But what about the Normans? Well, they had infantry, they had had foot soldiers, but they had something else that was new on the battlefield for this time. That was cavalry. Now, if you look here, you can see the Norman cavalry. It's a horse-mounted knight, but look at the weapons and the armour. 
they can see armor wise they've got mail they just got a lot of it so not too dissimilar to what the saxons had now the shield is a little bit different it's a kite shield rounded top and points downwards in order to protect the carrier's legs now actually some of the saxons would have had pretty similar shields they would have had kite shields too it just depended on which one they fancied but the kite shield is a lot better for the horseback because it goes down to protect the rider's legs without them having to reach downwards weapon wise they would have had swords on their hips however you can see that they are carrying what looks like spears but actually are lances now they're not actually too different it's just a lance is probably a little bit longer it means that the rider can attack his enemy without having to get down off the horse which was key because it meant that the rider was further away from attack now the normans they would have had foot soldiers as well similar to the saxons it's just they preferred more swords than they did on axes and they also had archers too and even the anglo-saxon chronicle says that they have crossbow men however on the bay or tapestry we don't see any so i'll leave that to you on which one you would rather believe but now there's a spanner in the works because if you look here you can see a very special gentleman this is bishop odo and he's the half brother of william duke of normandy now his armor looks a little bit different it's a different colour and if you look closely you can see that he's made of triangles instead of rings like the male. Now he does look like he's got mail underneath here and on the wrist and the leg so he might have had two layers but there's also a chance that this could have been something different. It could have been a padded jacket over his armour to give it some extra protection or it could have been something called lamellar. Now lamellar armour is leather that's been laid over each other and sewn together. In fact here is some lamellar armour here. Now, as you can see here, this replica set of lamellar armour is giving brilliant protection to the torso and the body underneath. It's also still light enough to be able to move around, which means it'll be great for a battle situation. However, lamellar is made from leather, which means it doesn't tend to survive in archaeological digs very well. But now that we've looked at all the weapons and armour, let's have a look at the actual battle itself. Now it started with Harold Godwinson on the top of the hill. This is a brilliant military advantage because he can see everything that is happening below with the Norman army. Now he also gets his soldiers to form up a shield wall, which is what you can see happening here on the Bayo Tapestry. Now that shield wall means that the soldiers are really, really close to each other, shields in front protecting themselves and their fellow soldiers. Now this shield wall manages to stop the Norman cavalry charging towards the Saxon army. Because by the time the cavalry have gone up the hill and attacked that shield wall, the horses are tired, but also that shield wall is really, really tight and very, very, very good protection. Also manages to stop any of the Norman archers, arrows and getting through as well. Now, what happens next is always going to be up for debate. The one thing we know is that the Norman cavalry started to retreat. They started to turn away and go away from the battlefield. However, we don't know whether this was a faked retreat or an actual retreat. But when the Norman cavalry turned away and started to retreat, the Saxons in the shield wall started to get a bit excited, thinking that they'd won and some of them broke the shield wall and started to chase down the horses that were leaving the battlefield. Now, when this happened, the cavalry turned around and they started to attack those Saxons that had left their shield wall, and this spelt the end for them. It's actually using the cavalry and in this retreat and go back sort of manoeuvre that changed history in England forever, because it's how the Battle of Hastings was won by William, Duke of Normandy. They managed to massacre the Saxons, and that was the end. Now, I've got a task for you guys. I would like you guys to close your eyes. Imagine that you are there in that Saxon shield wall at the top of the hill. You've got all the weapons and armour on you. You've got a mail shirt, you've got a helmet, you've got a shield in your hands, you've got a battle axe, you've got a sword, you've got a spear as well and a say axe in your pocket. Now, you're there, but you've just seen the cavalry start to arrive. How does that make you feel? Because you've never seen soldiers fighting in this way before. 
What about the people next to you? What do they look like? What are their faces like? What's their breath like? Can you hear your own heartbeat in your throat? Now, I want you to take all of these emotions that you are feeling and I want you to put them down in writing. I want you to write a poem that is going to ring through the ages describing what it was like at the Battle of Hastings. You're in the shield wall and you've seen the Norman cavalry arrive. Once you've done that, send them to us on our social media handles here. I can't wait to read them. And don't forget to join us on the next edition of Home Learning Hub.